we do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated, because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Okay. Uh, with us this hour is uh, Yoichi Shimatsu, one of the great writers and researchers on the planet, who is with us uh, weekly and has been for years. We talk about many things, and tonight we're going to talk about among other things, something that is in headlines at Rents. It's a, a very unusual story, and I want you all to, to try and find it. I think I posted 70, 70 stories today, so if you count down about seven news blocks, uh, you'll find it. It's there, and I'll give you the exact title here. Hold on just a second. Okay, it has to do with deer, uh, and deer dying under very unusual uh, circumstances. And this is a story that happened in, uh, I believe, Norway. And I'm looking for the story. Hold on, I'll find it. There it is. Hundreds of reindeer killed by mystery lightning in Norway. And I want you to click on that and open it up and take a look. Hundreds of deer, look for the keywords, hundreds of reindeer, actually, let me see if I can find out how many blocks it's down. One, two, three, four, five, let's see, six. No. There it is. Okay, I've got it now. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Looks like fifth fifth box down uh, today, and I can't find, but it's there. You'll find it. All right, hundreds of deer, Norway. There it is, fifth box, hundreds of reindeer killed by mystery lightning in Norway. Now, Yoshi sent me this this morning, and I put it together and, and put it up today because it is odd, and he kept doing more research on it, and he's standing by right now from somewhere on the other side of the planet. Are you there? Yeah, I am. I'm uh, on the borders of uh, Thailand, and, uh, you know, yeah, this story yeah. really popped up. Uh, Norway, I spent a lot of time in uh, Scandinavia, Norway, Finland, uh, parts of Sweden uh, after uh, Chernobyl, yeah, after the herds had to be killed off because of the radioactivity from yeah. Chernobyl. Yeah. The herds were coming back. Uh, still lots of radioactive moss now. But this is a, a much different thing. This, uh, what happened is, uh, in that story, I hope you posted the photo of the dead, uh, reindeer there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you bet. If you notice, yeah, a lightning bolt would leave, would cause a grass fire there. You know, it's, uh, it's late summer there, not a lot of precipitation, so the, uh, strike would have, uh, burned uh, area of grass, but you see the grass is totally it's, green. It's all green, uh, so dead, dead reindeer, all yeah. green grass, uh, water off in it's the distance. Grass, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically, this is not a conventional lightning strike, which generates, you know, a lot of heat, uh, radius of heat, or, you know, spots, you know, uh, big burning spots would cause a grass fire in a place like that, and uh, maybe even you would see it on the hides of the deer, you know, like uh, blisters and so on, but nothing like that. They just fly, uh, died where they fell, okay, and the grass is fine. That's exactly what it now, looks what like. this is about, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, this is, this is an electroshock experience, but it's caused by gamma, what's called a gamma ray flux, and uh, what's happening since Fukushima, and I've been warning about this, you know, I mean, um, uh, five years now that uh, this stuff is going to happen and it's happening big time and this event is very important because of that photo because we got details that they all died fairly suddenly it wasn't yeah. a long kill off maybe within minutes within an hour let's say um, and so this is real evidence that we haven't had let's say on the uh, kill off the caribou in uh, Canada Alaska the 
massive kill off recently in May in Kazakhstan on the steppe there, on the grasslands there. 120,000 antelope. They're called Saiga antelope. That's a half of the national wild herd got wiped out in May. And the same thing within a few days. Okay? Really? Wow. Uh, so this. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the that's a, that's a, uh, biggest probably kill off in the history of the steppe. Yeah, it's uh, not drought. There was plenty of rain before that. There's spring too much rain, in fact. And there's various theories, and we'll go over uh, all this stuff right now. But basically, what I've been saying, and this basically confirms it, is that uh, you know, gamma ray radiation killing, but it's a very specialized form that we haven't really seen uh, act in this sort of huge scale as we've uh-huh. seen now. Right. What it is is that uh, over the past years, as it is known, in fact, over the decades, the uh, the number of solar flares, the sunspot activity, has been diminishing. Okay. Right. Okay, we've seen it diminishing. And some spots, some flares, as bad as they are, you know, for sending all kinds of electromagnetic energy down to the planet, knocking out power stations, satellites, and all, as bad as they are, they do have a positive effect of basically pushing aside, you know, by, uh, uh, they, they push aside cosmic radiation. You know, they, um, so what we have is from distant galaxies, uh, it's really not known by scientists exactly what's causing these gamma rays to come down in the in the cosmic radiation. There's various theories, you know, quasar bursts and so on. One thing we do know is that there are uranium core stars out there in the galaxy. All of the Earth's uranium is alien in origin. It doesn't come from the solar system, okay? Uh. They come from a star that blew apart. Mm-hmm. And uh, its core is uranium, and it came down and bombarded Mars and Earth. That's probably what destroyed life on Mars was the bombardment and destroyed its atmosphere and, and swept away its water, destroyed its electromagnetic system. So these sort of events of massive gamma ray bursts, and there are some scientific theories. There are some scientists that believe that some of the six kill-offs, you know, major kill-offs, were caused by massive gamma ray bursts that were closer into us, you know. I mean, long ago, past, you know, like a wave that passed us, uh, we can't detect it now, but there are some scientists who believe that caused extinction events. So that would correspond exactly to what we've been saying about Fukushima opening up a massive ozone hole around the Arctic. There was a you know, negligible mm-hmm. ozone hole in the past, okay, before Fukushima. Right. Between April and June, uh, after 2011, uh, just a month after Fukushima, a massive ozone hole opened up over the uh, Arctic Circle and is still expanding, okay? And then we're getting less and less, uh, there's less and less ozone uh, over the northern hemisphere. And, and uh, so the effects of uh, the borealis, you know, the, um, of the northern lights, you know, they started to see them, in, in not just in Scotland, but in northern New, uh, northern England and also. We're seeing these effects, okay? So basically, a vast, unprotected uh, space in the, over the atmosphere, in uh, over the Arctic, okay, which is allowing cosmic radiation to stream in at a time that cosmic radiation is not being buffered away by solar flares, by solar activity, okay? So what this is, is much of that is gamma rays. And uh, one, and this stuff is very powerful. One of the strange, strange scientific findings was uh, astronomers who observed this uh, far-off galaxy called uh, Markov uh, 501, okay? And that this galaxy basically sent gamma rays and light and light photons, okay? and they were picked up on Earth. What happened is that in the race to Earth, the gamma rays were actually faster than the speed of light. Huh. Okay, that, so gamma that, rays are the great fast. destroyers. They yeah. just destroyed the Einsteinian relativity. And they tried to cover this up. They talked oh. about the warp. Uh, things were warped. The light was warped through space and all that. They tried to come up with all excuses. Mm-hmm. Well, the universe is a far more complex place than Einstein's, you know, little, uh, you know, little model of expansion there, you know, little, that, you know, it doesn't, you know, so basically gamma rays are extremely destructive. They go right through steel, you know, uh, alpha, 
and beta ray, uh, rays, you know, they will, they will, you know, bounce off metal and so on. Uh, they won't penetrate concrete. But gamma rays will go right through, uh, you know, right through concrete, right through steel, and keep going, okay? So, basically... Don't even these slow down. ...deer are outdoors. They're exposed. The cosmic rays coming down powerfully, you know, like in May, it's the beginning of summer... Yeah. And now, you know, in, in the uh, early, uh, late, late summer now in, in the Nordic area, massive amounts, maybe unprecedented in the, uh, well, you know, mammals have been the dominant species, have been raining down. What happens, it seems that at the cloud line level, in the fog, okay, it's interacting with, it's basically charging, these cosmic rays are charging the, uh, the fallout from nuclear plants. So in Scandinavia, that would be fallout from Fukushima that's been building there, but also in the Baltic from the Leningrad leaking, a very much damaged Leningrad nuclear plant near St. Petersburg, okay? So it's at the juncture of these two waves of uh, radiation, plus the soil there is granitic, so you would have some a lot of background radiation there anyway. So this cosmic radiation would basically drive, you know, will merge with the radiation at the lower levels of the atmosphere, rain down on these gears. And there's a, a point, it's called 30 grays. Gray is is uh, basically one, uh, uh, one gray is one fever per second. Massive dosages. At 30 grays, uh, it's instantaneous death. Okay. It's wow. like being electrocuted. You're just Got shut it. down, you fall. Yeah. And yeah. this apparently happened to these gears. Now these 120,000 antelopes in Kazakhstan that died in May, it rained heavily there, okay? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And people are saying, well, maybe they ate uh, toxic weeds and all. Well, and, you know, as you know, deer and antelope, uh, the old Vikings and all the old Sami people, all the tribal people, uh, they drink the uh, urine of reindeer to get high, basically, to eat these uh, magic mushrooms. You know, humans, if you eat them, they'll destroy your kidneys. The deer huh. have such powerful digestive system that, uh -huh. you know, they're, uh, they're ruminants, you know, and they also have very powerful kidneys. So they can eat toxic materials. You know, huge quantities of humans can never even approach, all right, and survive. It's not that. What the cause in Kazakhstan is that Kazakhstan um, had, it was the center of the Soviet nuclear uh, weapons program, the nuclear, uh, the semi politics uh, nuclear test site. My friend Mori Zumi, my cameraman, mm -hmm. you know, documented that very, very thoroughly mm -hmm. there. Massive numbers of atmospheric tests, underground tests occurred there. You got uranium mines there in the Tian Shan Mountains. Uh, so this area has a tremendous amount of radiation. And then it's north enough to be within this ozone hole left by Fukushima radiation. So what happened is after the rain, after the precipitation, you see evaporation. And that evaporation is carrying up all this radioactive material from the ground and from underground, okay? Moving it into cloud level, okay? At a certain wow. point, cosmic yeah. radiation comes yeah. in, yeah. brings it right down, and it's you know, accelerating these, you know, it's accelerating these photons, it's accelerating the radioactive uh -huh. particles, uh -huh. going right through the gear, killing them. What a, what is, what a, what can uh, we do about it? Well, Wait a minute. This is, that, this, well, in science fiction, this is the death ray. And see, when you're in old science fiction, mm -hmm. you should talk about the death ray. Mm -hmm. okay? Sure. Well, that's what this is. Gamma rays are the death ray. Yeah. When you get, you know, 30 grade uh, blasts of of, uh, of gamma rays, everything in your line of sight, you know, go right through a spaceship or whatever, or through a space colony and kill everything in sight. This is like a neutron bomb. Yeah. You well, know, you're just, you you have just given us. A description of something that a physicist would give us, and it was—it it makes total sense. It's completely pragmatic and logical. And I—I'm no physicist. I, I, if you don't have it nailed down, I don't know who could. I mean, this is the, the, look at those deer. Well, the sad thing is, where are they? Where, where is the physics establishment? No, oh, they're, they're not talking to us. They're taking the they're, exactly, on their grants and on their lo their sure, yeah. Yeah, they're on the take. Okay, they're not doing anything to defend the humanity from the weapons they unleashed on humanity. I mean, I mean, if this is ever when we see 120,000 antelope dying in one fell swoop, 300. That's really hard. That's Norway, just hard to fathom. Yeah, of course. 
Wow. And now we're starting to understand why did all the birds over North America disappear? What happened to them? What happened to all the deer, the larger animals? They got wiped out. Okay, they got wiped out the same way. There's a death ray. You know, the death ray from this uh, cup streaming through the ozone hole, interacting with the <laughs> radioactive material closer to ground, is is basically is rain. You know, this is the what was the uh, Bob Dylan? The hard rain is going to fall. This is the hard rain falling all over the northern hemisphere, and it's killing people. I guarantee millions of people are dying at this moment. You know, uh, from the cumulative effects. Now, the wow. question is, wow. these, the most intense effects we're seeing is around the Arctic Circle. How come we're close to it in, you know, these large open spaces near nuclear sites? And this nuclear cycling is also confirmed. Uh, one of the first real big studies of uh, close to the ground gamma ray effects, you know, cosmic effects, was around the TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Plant in Niigata, Okay. That's where uh, research was done. For some reason, the TEPCO, the nuclear plants are like magnets for the intensification of these cosmic rays. And in the same process, I tell you, that the radiation that they give off, the presence of radionucleotides, these things are being flushed down by the cosmic uh, rays and, and, and just making everything more deadly intensive. So the question is, how come we didn't see a lot of foxes, bears, Field mice dead all over the place in Kazakhstan. Right, right. Over in Norway. Because they burrow. Mm-hmm. They, were, they had they protection. Burrow. Yep. Half now, but, hey, but they... They're underground. But the... Yes, but the rays would have gone right into the ground, yes? And but killed them in the ground. If it's just solid rock, they should be... They should be baked underground. They should be killed underground. But it's not. You see... This, 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 you got to understand, life, living forms, your DNA, your proteins, they're the most sensitive to gamma rays, okay? They absorb gamma rays, okay? But that's also your best defense against these things. Organic matter, burrowing in the dirt, okay? Below grass, you know, you know, you know how the tundra is or the steps are. It's layer after layer, year after year of organic matter. Lots of uh, long proteins, DNA, you know, burying your layers of it. The gamma rays come down, strike that, okay? Hit the telomeres or hit the DNA, and they break apart. Basically, the gamma rays are made dysfunctional. They destroy the organic matter, okay? They destroy the molecule. They break the molecule. But they themselves are wiped out. Huh. You know, they they fragment, uh -huh. uh -huh. okay, into other particles. Does this make any sense at all why the Vikings used to have moss roofs? Have you been to Vikings home in Lake Tahoe? No. Like there's a there's a Viking uh, house there in Lake huh. Tahoe. Some huh. Nordic people built it. Interesting. Yeah, it's got a moss roof. I say moss. I mean I've seen like, photos. You know, there's 18 uh, inches. Yeah, it's no, it's totally thick. I know. I know what you mean. 18 inches of moss yeah. on there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's a Viking roof. Well, everyone thinks well, the Vikings did this to uh, for insulation in their log cabins and all that. Maybe they knew something about you know because the, you know, the Inuit, the Native American people said the, the uh, aurora borealis, the northern light is a very very bad omen. It's a very dangerous thing. Okay, hmm. they didn't. They don't look at oh how beautiful it is. They're not like us idiots, you know, who know nothing about nature. They said this is dangerous. Go hide. Native Americans they hide under their fur wraps, right? Three layers of, of fur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words. These people who survived up there, they swaddled themselves. They swallowed their, uh, where they lived with organic matter. Is, amazing. Is that amazing? That's, a, that is a, no, that's totally it's, amazing. It's I understand. A of yeah. life against yeah. cosmic warfare out there. You know, cosmic cosmos declaring war to destroy this planet. Is that um, incredible? It's totally amazing. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen photographs yeah, of those of houses. We need to worry about alpha and beta rays too. Mm -hmm. We got to eliminate alpha, beta, UV. I mean, we've got to, we got to block everything. I was told you know, by uh, Dane, so Dane Wigington, who does all the research on geoengineering, chemtrail spraying, uh, and the war on humanity mm -hmm. waged from above, uh, mm -hmm. says that the latest mm -hmm. readings in areas of Northern California where he lives, which is by Mount Shasta, mm -hmm. are that the yeah. UVB 
percentage is up to over 50 percent now. It should be six percent. It's over 50. Now, you go out in a shirt like I have in the sun, and it actually burns your skin through the shirt. You can feel it. Right, too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's what's been happening. I've been saying this about Fukushima. Well, Shaft is right in that belt, I told you. When well, I that's an hour and a half uh, south California. of me, so yeah. Yeah, this is a black smudge coming from the uh, incinerators in Tokyo. Hey, listen, this I, I got, Yoshi, I mentioned this before, but I, I was, everyone up here and further up to Seattle, which is nine, nine hours north, uh, I got hit. We were dosed heavily. It might have been iodine-131, yeah. I don't know. But for about a week to 10 days, I could taste it. I could feel it. I, it was in the back of my throat. Uh, it moved around my sinuses, causing pains all over the front of my face and my forehead. And that was the yeah. worst. There was a second one about, oh, I don't know, six, eight months later, another exposure. So it, it's here. There's no question about it, none. Yeah. Well, you know what? What? This is so obvious. And what is the government doing? What is the government oh, doing? Come on. It's harassing people like Dana Dernford, who's out there trying to understand what's going on, trying to Thanks. make sense of this, trying to find ways, strategies to defend, you know, the planet, the living things, including humans, but also animals of all sorts on land, on sea. Harassing, trying to kill, kill them. Yeah. I mean, the, well, they the, do. The they do. The, they, the government, the global government, is 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 basically genocidal. You know, they created these nuclear weapons. These nuclear no, un, unquestionably weapons, to shut them down. Unquestionable. They are headed. They're headed toward genocide. Yeah, they're headed toward. Obviously, uh, a, they call it a die-off. It may be a kill-off of the majority of the world's population. Yeah. They're they're pushing toward nuclear war right now. You can see it. I just watch the yeah, news. Yeah, Look yeah. what NATO is being ordered to do. These, Come on. These are pathological. They're, 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 in, like, they're, they're basically psychotic. They're, well, well, they're madmen. Yeah. Crazy. Social path in power. Yeah. yeah. They're insane. They're genocidal. You know, it's like yeah. Friday the 13th. Imagine our, you know, Night of the Living Dead, all those zombies, that's your government. You got That's it. That's your industry. You got it. That's you your got military. It. It's them zombies out there. Do you understand what's going on? You got it. You know, they'll tear anything apart. They are out of their minds. Yeah. You know? and, and this gear kill off is putting things into a focus of why everything is dying inside yeah. the Arctic Circle around the Arctic. You know, outside the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Why this wave of death and the circle of death is expanding and expanding and expanding. And then the human po populations, we're not getting any numbers, any statistics, no alarms from health services. No. Of, you know, of you know, how the population is decreasing. They're sending in immigrants to boost the population figures of all the Scandinavians who are dying. Uh, hold and on a minute. What's going on? Hold on, uh, Yoshi, we got to pause. Yeah. And think about all this for a minute. We'll come right back with uh, Yoshi Shimatsu in just a couple of minutes. Don't go away. Okay. And we're back talking with uh, Yoshi about things that are going on. The expanding circle of death and destruction is, is obvious and clear. The constant pummeling from west to east across the northern Pacific from uh, Fukushima Daiichi is never going to stop. It's getting worse. We are getting, if you look on the right side, look at the Fukushima radiation box and look there, you'll see at the top, a bunch of folks have been kind enough to write in their observations about insect life and bird life in their areas. And we're finding the same thing that Dana found out about in British Columbia. The insects are diminishing, if not virtually gone in many places. The birds follow them because there's two links in the chain of life. Uh, the food link is gone for the birds, so they go, they leave. It's the, the top story in the Fukushima nuclear catastrophe box. Updates, no bugs, no birds. As we've warned, extinction is here. Please contribute observations. So if any of you would like to contribute, please go read those and uh, take a notice. Look at your windshield after you've been driving around in, in August. Maybe you noticed earlier there aren't any bug splats on it to speak of. It used to be you drive 10 minutes, you have bug splats all over your car. Not so much anymore, hardly any. Uh, I was out last evening and I saw, used to be dozens, swarms of mosquitoes. I saw two. That's it. That's fine with me. But uh, bees, wasps, yes, uh, they're still around. Uh, 
No flies. I think I've seen one fly all summer. Um, no caterpillars. No normal bugs. A few beetles, not many. Uh, it's, it's just changed. Birds, gone. Used to be uh, six, seven, eight years ago, you'd stick your head outside or go out and you'd hear birds chirping and singing all over the place. Tweet, 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 chirp, 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 tweet. No more. No birds singing. No birds. No finches, no sparrows. Uh, I think I've seen a couple of doves. Uh, geese, yes, they're grass eaters. Uh, ducks, not so many. They're bug eaters. Uh, they're gone. But the bird population is, I would say, down by 90, 95 to 97 percent from what it was. They're gone. They're just not here. Now, the, the government can tell us, well, they migrated. No, they didn't migrate. I think they're dead. I don't think they're around anymore. The population can't sustain itself with no food. It just doesn't. It doesn't work. Here's, uh, here's uh, any comment, Yoshi. I'm going to read one of these letters we got. It's very interesting. Yeah, please read. I'm interested in you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, this is from uh, Jeremy, Dying Insects in Central West Virginia. Hi, Jeff. Uh, it says some very nice things about the program. Thank you. Uh, I live in the almost geographic center of West Virginia, a couple of miles from it. It's heavily wooded and rural. The whole county only has about 11,000 people. Uh, so I remember when all the craziness started and before then. Uh, he's in his 40s. I have seen a major decline in both insects, birds, and creek life. The yard used to be full of birds years ago. The creeks used to be full of minnows and crawdads, craw crabs, he calls them. They're crayfish. Uh, looking out my window onto the 10 acres of meadow beside my house on this warm summer afternoon, I do not see or hear one bird. Just like I said, the creek is literally empty of life especially compared to the life it used to have when I was a kid. As far as bugs, there are still a few, mostly wasps. Haven't seen a fly in the house or outside at all for a few years now. The lightning bug population is way down. They used to be uh, everywhere in the summers. We still have some spiders, but I can jog around the field in the evening without a shirt on and not get bitten by anything. Also, I don't have to clean my windshield at all anymore. And I only wash my car about twice a year. The rain washes off the dirt mostly. The windshield never needs cleaned at all. It was cicada season, and as a kid, they would be so thick in the yard, you almost couldn't go out. I think I saw three this year. So there you go, and thanks to uh, Jeremy for that. There are several others up there, and, and he just, I hadn't read this until I just read it to you folks now. Uh, he just mimicked exactly my observations. Not intentionally, but that's what he's seeing. And I, I've got other letters up there that say the same kind of thing. Um, here, let's see. I'll get another one here. Mm, I'll get, go up here. Uh, anyone who has driven in uh, California Central Valley has known how messy your radiator, chrome, and windows become encrusted with hundreds of huge, juicy agricultural insects. Uh, this is from Dana, another Dana. Uh, in the recent past, a trip across the valley would mean a trip to the car wash. This past month of July 2016, I drove across the Central Valley from Yuba City to Clear Lake. No bugs. I drove down Highway 5, the interstate, to Merced. No bugs. I drove back to Yuba City. My son and I laughed when one medium-sized bug hit the windshield near Stockton. One bug. Last year, I had visits from about three mosquitoes. This year, I saw only one mosquito. I do not see many birds now in the Sierra Nevada foothills. These forested hills previously teemed with bugs, birds, and critters. As I walk along, I search for critters like ants, grasshoppers, and beetles. I rarely see any. This forest is becoming too quiet. He's right. And I look too. I don't see ants. Uh, I, I think I've seen one colony of ants, a small colony, and they were kind of odd ants. Uh, they were running around aggressively a little. 
But uh, you don't see the long trains of ants. don't even see the carpenter ants anymore. They're gone. And they're just gone. I don't know what to tell you. And this is all being kept from you. These people who wrote in, I asked them, one from California, one from West Virginia. So the east to west, uh, the west to east uh, counter, but it's coming from the east to the west, across the Pacific, from Japan, death, extinction, is spreading all across the country. It's, it's just, it is what it is. And it's, it's, it's very sad, very sad. Yeah, it is a circle of death moving down from the north to south, getting larger every year, taking out more and more species. It's a mass extinction event, it's a wave of death sweeping across. And uh, it's going to have massive reproduction. I mean, uh, repercussions for, let's say, the food industry when all the... Oh, yeah. No more uh, <laughs> pollination by insects. Yeah, yeah. It's going to have the en enormous effects, I think. And when domesticated animals start to get, get it, you know. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, I, I think pets, I think there's been a, a lot of people who lost their pets of late, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. It would be interesting if any of you out there are veterinarians, what you're seeing, yeah. Yeah. what you're noticing. Yeah. We're seeing the sea coast, of course, all that. So basically, this thing is spreading. Uh, now we're seeing is not just, you know, the trick here, the, the real problem here in these reindeer and sight that point to another problem also. When you have these sudden uh, fluxes, these surges coming down, okay, uh, with cosmic rays and uh, radiation and the moisture, they don't leave a lot of trace, okay, in the body. You know, these are these are these are protons. Are these are you know high energy protons going right through your body like a, a billion bullets, okay, right through your body, okay, and they exit. So they don't leave a huge radioactive signature. Mm -hmm. And in many of these places, we've already got, let's say, California. This is a pretty high level of background radiation in Kazakhstan, obviously, because they did nuclear tests there. Norway, because of granite soils and being in Baltic area and all that. So, and then Fukushima is just raising the background level everywhere. So You know, you mentioned, you know, you mentioned the, granite. The bodies that are dead may arguably have a lower level than, you know, outside, but they were uh -huh. still killed in the flash, just like being microwaved. You know, they killed in the flash, uh -huh. and if you don't find the evidence of the body, okay? Uh -huh. It just uh -huh. it causes seizure, basically heart failure. Heart failure, circulatory, your heart your heart fails, and your nervous system, your central nervous system. Yeah, now, great. Your brain and nervous system. Just That's they're, why they're you have got to system. take care of what you eat and keep your immune system and your health yeah. as high a level as you possibly yeah. can. You have, you can't be uh, overweight. You can't be in poor health anymore. You, you'll yeah. pay the price. Uh, you, it'll catch up with you real quick now. Yeah, yeah. You, it would be hard to be, let's say, uh, disabled in this situation. You know, I mean, that was a major thing about Dana, the fact that he had deal with the disability and still do amazing, you know, uh, odysseys out there yeah, in the ocean and yeah. on land. But that's a rare case. Most people would have a problem. Uh, it, it won't be long before they're felt. So it's very hard. The other thing we just might start recommending tinsel, I mean, you know, blockers for alpha and beta you know, these things that will help a lot. But the other thing is, if you put out a... Hold, video, Yoshi, hold, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, you're breaking up. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. You're breaking up a little bit. Hold on. Right when you started to talk about alpha radiation, uh, let me read this one more short letter, and maybe the uh, connection will get better. Okay. Here's a quickie. Uh, this is from Paul. Hi, Jeff. I live in Oklahoma City, and this summer we have had ample rain. Everything is green and leafy, so there should be an abundance of bugs. Even in drier years, there can be plenty of them. But this summer, the bug count is well below what it has been in the past. On the property of the house where I live, we have two large night lights mounted on power poles outside. In summers past, there would be clouds of bugs flying around them, as well as on the front porch light uh, by the front door. You would have to fight the bugs to get into the house. Not the case this year. There are a few, but just a few. Even last year, there were more than now, and many more two to three years ago. I just, uh, blah, 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 he goes on from there. Thank you for all the years of information, long-time listeners since uh, the mid-90s. Thank you, Paul, for that. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, oh, he had one more sentence here. 
Uh, uh, da, 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 da. I just played a show done by Josh such and such, and he said in Wisconsin he would walk from the grasses through the grasses, and the grasshoppers would be jumping out of the grass. But he hasn't seen one in three or four years. And I don't see any grasshoppers around here either anymore. That, that's amazing. Thanks, mm-hmm. Paul, for that. Okay, all right, go ahead, Yoshi. Let's go. Alpha, beta, radiation. Yeah, well, uh, you know, there are ways to deflect those because they're, you know, and protect against those. But I think now we should be considering if you do have a, uh, a vacation home or a house, uh, a green roof. Using lots of organic, you know, substances, fibrous stuff, you know, long fibrous stuff. Ah, interesting uh, idea. Yeah, uh, with greenery on top. Yeah, take 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 the Viking approach. I think you know, burrow. We've got the burrow. It's the uh, the only animal surviving are the burrowers. You know, and uh, if you're not going to survive long. I mean, but uh, a few years is better than nothing. Better than being out there unprotected. Cement, steel, tin, you know, uh, tin roofs and all that. You know, ceramic. Zero protection. Camel grades go right through those things like sponges. Okay. So the organics are your, you know, isn't it odd that organic? That is odd. Very odd. <laughs> isn't it weird? We talked about, oh, well, need for organic food and all yeah, that organic yeah. cultivation methods. We talked about all that. And suddenly we need organic houses. How you know, funny. Organic yeah. shelter. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that amazing? The cure, I mean, or at least our only defense against what this so-called modern civilization has brought the plant of devastation is the organic. Yeah. Going back to organic, going back to the burrowing in life itself yeah. and then building yeah. that environment Dark. for your Dark. pet. Outdoors, yeah. same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave yeah. them in a wood dock. Yeah. Wood is better than, any, yeah, better than brick or whatever, but most dog houses now are artificial. It's plastic. You know, and there's nothing in it. And yeah, it's your right there. So, so if you live in a wood house, you're you're uh, much better off if you have a solid wood house or something. Log cabin, even. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I've also you know also find in the Fukushima area, you got to the fire at the wood. Even in the waters of Fukushima, the wood was nearly impervious. Yeah, and the small structure. Mm. Cell structure the gamma rays wouldn't get in very far before it hits the wood fiber. Uh, you know, got some of the DNA on the surface, but the interior of the wood it was pretty sad. You know, even the sound the life grew up against a hostile environment. And see, these trees were at a time when the earth was a pretty rugged place. You know, there were volcanic activity, a lot more comets, meteorites. It was a dangerous environment, and life persisted. Life built defenses. You know? Yeah. And suddenly, modern man comes along and says, oh, let's build everything out of plastic and glass. You know, steel, right? No, no. You got it. You know, a million, hundreds of millions of years of struggle of life against these elements, against cosmic radiation, against, you know, Na- nature, uh, nature, radioactivity. Nature knew best. Nature prepared for us uh, in a way so we could have a safe, relatively safe existence. And what are we doing to nature? What are we doing to our planet? Millions and hundreds of millions of years of evolution on this planet and everything slowly worked out to where it got along. It was symbiosis and all. And now look what we've done. Completely upset and destroyed everything. Well, well, Tokyo Electric just opened... Started running another power plant, a MOX fuel plant in Chicago. You got oh, they did? They're applying to. Yeah, oh, they're, yeah, they're yeah, applying. They, they, yeah. they, they got started up a month earlier than, than, than planning. Yeah, They just went ahead, all guns running, get the MOX fuel going, get more plutonium churning, churning out of there. You know, on, right just on, what yeah, we right need, ladies and gentlemen, just line. what we need. Then they have. Then they're applying to reopen one of their uh, test codes. Going to try to reopen the plant in Niigata. This one where all this uh, one of the big studies was done on the gamma ray, cosmic radiation, and gamma ray. They're trying uh-huh. to reopen that. That one was pretty much disrupted in Earth. Pretty life. ironic. I mean, these people are main. They're they're total maniacs. They don't see what's going on. They don't understand. The, they don't have the slightest clue with the basic science involved, of the risk involved. And they're just plunging ahead. 
you know, we don't care for the consequences, and they're doing nothing to the people, of course, at Fukushima. Just, you know, just go back to these radioactive bubbles, you know, and <laughs> go back and die, you know. I mean, it, it, it is outrageous. The world shouldn't take it. Uh, then they catch this company that in China, right, now, that has smuggled fish uh, from Fukushima. They get the radioactive fish. Ship it down to Vietnam. Ship it to one city in China. Yeah, I think Guangxi, and then uh, then try to sell it in Shandong. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, how how yeah, okay. considerate? Yeah, this, this is a huge. Amount. They don't care. Yeah, human yeah, life, yeah, Yoshi. The bottom line is, human life means nothing to these people. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Else. Money is everything, and. Uh, you know, there may be some desperate fishermen, but, you know, they shouldn't be doing this. You know, you, you can't, and you're a victim of a crisis, you can't be, you know, it's the same, by the same argument. Just because you've been bombed in Syria is a terrible thing, of course, or Libya or whatever. It doesn't mean you have a right to go over Europe and start raping and killing people. I mean, you know, it doesn't give you, you know, by extension, you know, the, the commission, the continuation of the harm that was done to you. You know, you got to take the hit, you know, like a man. And uh, face up to your own problems. You can't go around there trying to export your problems to other people. This is not happening. Japanese government is out of control. The, uh, of course, the American government is totally paralyzed under the current government. It has been. They don't dare mention any of this stuff. You know, when uh, we did the stuff on the uh, ozone hole, it was all edited. You know, I mean, that study of, by 70 international scientists was completely... Uh, butchered and, you know, uh, covered over by uh, NASA and by uh, NOAA. You know, they, 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 they were the major funders, and they were able to exercise their progress. They could just tell the European and Japanese funders, you know, go to hell and uh, take over and deny the Fukushima effects on that, you know, the cause, you know, the causal, the causal factor of Fukushima radiation on that ozone hole in the Arctic. So, you know, I mean, it's good riddance to Obama. You know, that's all I can say. It's good riddance. You know, I mean, he has been a contributor to this kill-off. Absolutely. He oh, for sure. That, you know, he, that, he's a poster he boy for it. Let the information come out. Exactly. A nuclear cover-up is very much part should be a part of the campaign because... It well, is Hillary was involved with selling 20% 20, 20 of America's uranium to Russia. That's Hillary. The Clintons. They were involved with that deal. Yeah. Big deal. Huge deal. Yeah. yeah so, much. anyway. Yoshi, thanks for everything. Yeah, Great job on the yeah, uh, sure. on the deer. And uh, as usual, uh, we'll talk to you. Yeah, I'll get you an article on that. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll lay out the science on this. But I think now this is finally the telltale evidence we've been waiting for to show what's been happening. This I agree. Actual, you know, the scientific step-by-step of what's been happening. All right. All right. Well, let's just hope we're seeing it well. I know there's yeah. been there's just nothing but terrorist terrorist attacks on him. Yeah. You know, terrorist attacks. Yeah. And, and, and media venom uh, attacking the you know, character assassination. So I hope he. I can understand why he's not feeling well enough to be on no, the program. But he's, I hope he's he tired. Back yeah. On his feet and back. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, it's just hammered him financially to destroy your car like that. Of course. Yeah. You know, I mean. This is just, and then force him to go to court and spend all that money. It's, it's an, just, it's an it's evil just, planet, Yoshi. It's, it's an evil warfare. planet. It's psychological warfare. Yeah. It's terrible. It's just a slow, drawn-up murder that they're trying to achieve. And yeah. all it's doing is getting us not very happy with them, and it's not going to deter resistance, just like tomorrow's election in Florida. Resistance... You know, within the Democrat Party, is not going to be destroyed. You know, it's quite the other. The bad guys are going to get it in the end. Yeah. All right, my friend. Take care. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Yoichi Shimatsu, and uh, that's our our Monday night program. Wow. All right, tomorrow night, Tuesday, David Ike will be here for two hours. Oh, we'll talk about a longtime friend. David will be here tomorrow night for two hours. Uh, and we will be here for you with, I don't know who the first guest is going to be yet, but we'll be back tomorrow night in 21 hours. You take care, and we'll talk soon.